I decided to start off a new project because it's uh, something I've been wanting to do for a little while. Um, my channel has mainly been devoted to politics, um, write, um, talking about writing, um, the process for writing, how to, to, to write better. Um, but I, I kind of thought I'd like to do something a little more, I don't know, I, I would think it'd be useful because I started thinking to myself, what would have helped me in writing had I actually seen this before I actually started writing? And so what I started thinking about that I would have liked to have seen is probably a play-by-play -play on how you actually write a novel. Because when I sat down and wrote my first novel, I basically, you know, <laughs> I just pulled out the, the, the typewriter, I think I started on a typewriter the first time, um, and just started typing and then just kept working and working from there. Of when I actually wrote my first novel, it was actually on a word processor, one of the early word processors. But um, I mean, I, I had written, you know, a substantial amount of stuff before I actually got to and decided I was going to actually do this. And so, and that's how I went through and finished the novel. But by then I had already finished a number of works already. So this was not a new thing to me. But I kind of thought just recently how interesting, or at least I would have thought it would have been interesting, is to see somebody actually, you know, explain the process of taking something and turning it into an actual novel. Because not all novels are the same way. And that's, that's a, a kind of a problem that a lot of writers have is they think that the you know the structure and the process is always the same well it's not well for some some writers it might be but for me it's been completely different like there are some times where I'll outline the whole thing beforehand and then get to writing it there'll be other times where you know I'll just write it off the seat of my pants kind of thing um, and all the way until I'm done other times I've written pieces of information here and there and then years later complete another piece of it and um, I did it with one of my humorous novels the Marriott where I, I literally just um, wrote the whole first half of the novel while I was in grad school um, finished off the PhD and then kind of forgot about the novel for a while and then couple of years, I mean, literally five years later, went, I know I can do something with this. And what was interesting is it was a humorous novel, which is the only first one I ever did that was humorous. Um, and I had hit a point in my life where I was like, I can't write anything funny anymore. And just stopped writing it and went on to other projects. I actually wrote another novel in the process. And then I kind of went back to it and then this humor element kind of came back and it really became really enjoyable and I actually enjoyed finishing it. And so that novel was finished and then, and then published later on. And so, the, like I said, the process can be all sorts of different things. Now, in this time, I've written 16, 17 novels. I tried to count them up the other day, which is really weird. You'd think you'd have a consistent count of how much stuff you've actually written. Um, I've also written stuff under other names, and so I started putting all this stuff together, and sadly, I'll just kind of a little aside, um, one of my novels written by a name that's not even me has sold far more than anything <laughs> I've written as my own name, so just kind of, a, I'd say tragic, if not a kind of sad, you know, I'm just like, I, I kind of want to take credit for it, but at the same time, I'd like the idea of the anonymity of not revealing it's me, you know, and so therefore it's, it's out there, uh, and it's still doing well, um, but like I said, it was never me, and um, I've actually written two novels under that name, and they're doing okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, my name has a little harder time you know, becoming part of the mainstream, but you know, it's, that's the process of writing, you know, successes, ebbs and flows and all that kind of thing. But anyway, like I said, there's 16, 17 novels we're talking about. And so in that process, I've written all sorts of different ways. Well, 
one thing happened a long time ago. It's about my third novel, I think it was. Is I was I had written my first one, which was a mystery suspense, which was innocent until proven guilty, and then I I wrote a science fiction novel called Loser, which became Leader of the Losers, um, and then I had written it was kind of like an espionage, James Bondish kind of a, a novel, which was called. Uh, Back then, I think it was called the Armageddon Project. And, you know, dealing with the Soviet Union and all sorts of intrigue and stuff like that. And yeah, it was fun to write. Um, long book is about, I'd say about 400 pages long. And so I finished that and put it into a drawer and kind of left it off to the side because I never really felt it was good enough to be what it needed to be. Um, and then a couple of years later, the... Soviet Union collapsed. And so I rewrote the novel, um, still called The Armageddon Project. And I had to incorporate elements of the Russian Republic now as part of the, the main villain of the story, or at least elements of the Rus Russian government, not the government itself, then became the, the villains of the story. Well, that worked out pretty well. And then that government fell. Um, then it kind of changed and Europe changed, all of Eastern Europe fell. And <laughs> so this kept happening to where I kept trying to rewrite this novel over and over again. So at some point the title of it changed and it went from the Armageddon Project to, to Touch the Unicorn, which was um, the main character had a code name called the Unicorn. And so he, um, he He's now, he's always been the hero of the story, but now the, his title becomes more of the thing. And I, I was writing a whole bunch of nop or stories at this time, short stories, some proto novels, some novels that never actually got made, but never finished. And so, and they're all about this main character who was a guy named Daniel Thompson. Yeah, as an, another aside, I have this really bad habit of using the word Thompson over and over again. My very first novel, Mark Thompson, is the, the hero of the story. Um, I think my fourth novel, which is a science fiction novel, is called Thompson's Bounty. Um, I think it's Stephen Thompson. I don't even remember the first name of that guy. Um, but I keep using the name over and over again. So, like, and again, it's not surprising that my second novel used Daniel Thompson as the name. But anyway, it's no longer the name I use now for it, but it's kind of what I started off with. And so anyway, I, I created this idea of to touch the unicorn and then kind of didn't like the title anymore. Um, I kept thinking there's something wrong with it because it sounded too fantasy and it's definitely not a fantasy story. Um, so I kept looking at it going, I don't really have a name for it. And then basically the Russian Republic kind of collapsed again and became something else. And the whole government, um, there are scenes that took place in, uh, in Europe and then Eastern Europe. And those places were no longer even the same anymore. So I, I went, okay, I got, there's nothing I can do with this novel. So I left it in a drawer and just kind of kept it there. Well, this is actually a copy of the original manuscript, which um, I was just looking at it the other day. I uh, printed it out just because I was going to be using it. Now, single-spaced, it's 271 pages, which means it's probably double that in the amount of spaces it would be. So we're talking about a 500-page book based on, like, the last time that I rewrote this thing. And so, which, which was fine, but like I said, that was over a decade ago, and I just kind of, I gave up on the idea, because I figured there's nothing I can do with this novel, and so then, kind of, I don't know what was happening, but I was reading a, a, a book by, I think it was Richard Carroll, who was um, basically an autobiography talking about um, his life as a historian, and I think I have the right name. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll make a correction kind of later on, but anyway, um, and so I read it and I thought it was really interesting because his story was fascinating. And I thought people don't really understand historians that well. Um, I'm not a historian myself. I mean, I do a lot of research in history and all that, 
but I've had a lot of friends who are actually professors of history, and so I've talked to them. And so I did a lot of kind of ground searching through that to the information from them, you know, queried quite a few of them asking different information. I had a couple of uh, really good historian friends that were actually readers of mine who had actually kind of helped me put together some of my projects, make sure that they're historically accurate. And I started thinking, I wonder what the process of putting together this kind of story would be from a historical perspective. And so I started looking at the same story and I thought, what would happen if somebody came along and found this story and then started investigating it, you know, as a historian rather than me just writing it as, you know, the writer and, you know, kind of being the third person, omnipresent kind of person throughout the whole process. And so what really started happening here, and I thought this was kind of interesting, is I started incorporating this historian as a character himself. And so he literally became another character. And so another sidebar, um, when I was doing um, grad school in, for, for another master's degree, I picked up one in communication, um, I started doing a lot of research on the former Soviet Union, Soviet Union and um, I was doing research on the 1991 August coup, which not a lot of people know a lot of facts about it, but you might know a little bit about it. But I mean, when I watched it actually happen in, in, in real time, um, it affected me um, because it was just a really huge, momentous, momentous moment. Kind of makes sense. That's what momentous moments are. <laughs> and so anyway, but it really, really affected me. And so I, I, I used that actually in my research when I was actually writing my thesis. And all of that research started to come to, to my realization that there's much more here than I realized. And so I started putting together and I started thinking, what if something happened way back during all this time? Um, during this August coup that wasn't really about the coup itself. Like if something else was going on, un, you know, in the background, you know, underneath all of this stuff. And that's where this story kind of generated. And so the name of the, the book that I'm writing right now, and that's what this whole project is going to be about, is me putting together this whole thing. So I'm going to go through the process of putting the story together. So I'll talk about, you know, how, how the plot gets driven. Um, then I'm going to talk about some of the characters, how the characters got created. Because Daniel Thompson's not really the main character anymore. Um, there is another name for him now. It doesn't really matter who he is. Um, but the thing is, I think his name is Sheridan. And so, but when I finally come up with it, you'll, you'll come through without all that. You'll totally understand that. But um, same person, but different characterization now based off of him. And he's no longer the main character of the story, whereas the historian is the main character. And there's a couple of other semi-prominent characters that now become the prominent characters that they never were before. And it's kind of interesting because a historian would focus on different things. And then I started realizing, well, what struggles would a historian go through? And realized that actually generated more of the story than I ever actually imagined. And I, you always got to be careful that you're not putting too much into it because readers don't want to be overwhelmed with, you know, side information. But at the same time, it's got to be important and kind of lead the, the plot going forward. And so that's kind of where I am with it right now. And so we'll talk about that. So we'll talk about characters. We'll talk about the scene, like how, how it's changed over time, um, you know, even locations and how locations are and how you actually research locations. Because some of the places I've gone to because I realized I needed a much, you know, in-person kind of thing. Kind of like the Howard Carter argument, Howard Carter, the uh, um, Egyptologist who uh, found King Tut's tomb, um, who basically said, you know, you can do all, you can say this word for word, but you can do all the, the research you want to do in the, you know, in the, in the, in the books, 
but eventually you need to get onto the ground, you know, into Egypt and actually start digging through things to find, you know, the real story of what's going on. So, I mean, that's kind of the thought that I had going into that as well. And I've always felt that when I'm writing a book, I, I write about places I've tried to have been to really hard in science fiction, obviously. So you kind of pattern that on something in your own life um, or something you have good connection to. Like you wouldn't write a story that you watched a movie about because <laughs> it's just, well, at least I would. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying it's just not my kind of thing. And so we'll do that and we'll, we'll look at all of this. I'm going to go through character generation processes and some of the research and the work you do with your characters themselves, um, different story aspects of how you actually deal with the story, how it changes over time. All, so this is going to be a series of videos that's literally all about the process of writing this novel as I'm going forward writing it. Like I said, the story is completely changed from what I started with and it's something much different than I imagined it was going to be in way back in the day. And so hopefully you find this useful because the idea is, is to be able to take this information and use it for yourself. Use it to become the better writer that you want to be. And so hopefully it benefits you in some way. Um, if this kind of thing interests you, I will be doing this quite a bit more. So I would recommend subscribing to the channel and I think it's clicking the bell is the thing. <laughs> what all the people say who actually have their YouTube channels and all that, you know, because I will be putting more and more content in. Now, granted, I also do stuff on political science and all that other kind of stuff. So if that's not your ball of wax or that is your ball of wax and the writing's not your ball of wax, remember, I'm going to have lots of different videos on all sorts of different things. So subscribe and hopefully I start sharing some of the stuff that you actually want to see. Anyway, I'm going to end it with that and say thank you for watching in the first place if you got all the way through this video.